welcome to the channel thank you for tuning in on today's episode on just for the mothers we are going to be looking at something very specific we're going to be learning today how to remove the date and day window on a Seiko Epson NH36 movement now in front of me I have a project watch which I have been working on and sometime after I completed it the movement just you know went dead on me so this movement is a scrap movement now and I'm going to use it uh, going forward on a few of my videos to show you specific tasks like how to remove handsets, dial changes. So this movement is going to be just for me to play around with. So let's get into the video. Let's start off by removing the case back. Let's take the movement out, take off the dial and the hands and let's get down to the NH36 movement so we can begin taking the date and date disc out. Now you might be wondering why don't you take that out. Um, so if you are a modder of course you know why or if you plan to mod then you know you can ha you've got all sorts of mods coming out now you've also got new date and day discs uh, which are loomed uh, whether it's just the writing or the full disc itself so that's quite handy to know if you want to ever mod your watch and put in a loomed day or date disc another reason is again going back to modding if you do come across a no date dial and you want a no date function then you can actually remove the date and date disc and just allow the watch just to have a time function uh, you won't remove the ghost position but you will remove the clicks when you do wind the watch in position one now i've got all my tools ready um, and it's always handy to get all the right tools for the right job and it's also a good idea to work in a clean environment so i do like to now and then start putting things away before i go any further um, you know what I would recommend people to do these movements they only cost 20 pounds uh, so I do suggest is get one of these movements or if you have an old movement and I do encourage people to seriously you know get a bit of tools and just start messing about with the movements and just to get over the fear or being nervous about damaging movements uh, it's a good idea to take it apart put it back together just to get a real feel for it right so the first thing which we need to do is remove that day disc in order to do that that day disc is held down by this little C clip, or it's known as the snap. Now, the way you take that out, you just you need to get a very thin and small screwdriver, and just slowly, slowly ease it in underneath one of those feet, and just turn. As you saw, it will fly off. So make sure you know you got something around it because you don't really want to lose that, especially if you consider uh, just using the day wheel again. So keep that safe. Now, once that is off. Um, then you can go ahead and remove the day disc. Now just use a bit of blue tack, um, tweezers, uh, just something sticky to lift it off. And that's the first half of what we're trying to do today, complete and done. So you'll see this small wheel here, which is the day uh, change wheel. Now you can just remove that, put it to the side. Now what you have done, effectively you've turned this movement into an NH35. This is why I say, if you want to buy a movement, buy the NH36s, because you can easily just remove that, convert them to NH35s, and because you can't go the other way around, you can't go from an NH35 to an NH36 due to the cannon pinion, um, slightly different shape, slightly different height, which doesn't allow a day disc to be fitted on. So now we're changing the day disc. You can see that is an NH35 now, but we are going to go one step further we're going to disassemble it a little more so we can remove that date disc. In order to do that, we've got four screws on the date indicator maintaining plate. That's what it's called. Um, I'm going to try and use some technical terms if I can. If I can't, I'll just call them what they are. So in order to remove that plate, we need to remove those four screws. Now you need a thin screwdriver. I can't stress enough how thin these need to be. So a lot of the times these screwdrivers do need to be filed down. So you can fit into the screw and not damage it. Go ahead, remove one screw at a time. Use some thin tweezers um, just to keep those screws absolutely safe. They're very small. They are very fiddly. The trick is being firm but gentle uh, when applying force. And make sure you don't damage the screws by slipping off. This takes a lot of practice. Um, it took me quite a long time, even to this day. I'll slip on the screws. Sometimes I just find it a little bit awkward. So, you know, I'm not trying to look like a master or anything when I do this video. You'll actually see it for what it is. 
Now once you have removed all four screws, you are able to remove the date indicator maintaining plate. Use your tweezers and just carefully lift that off. Now underneath that plate, you see a little gold screw. Now that assists in changing the date. We just want to keep this safe, um, put it to the side. Once you have the plate off, you can just literally lift out that date disc. Now at this point, if you want to, you can replace it with your loom date disc and just reverse the process and you're done. But we're going to go a little bit further. So that little wheel there, that is responsible for changing the day and the date. So where the slot is sitting, it moves back and forward because you can twist the crown clockwise, anti-clockwise to change either or. So now there's another plate that sits there, which is I think the date jumper. Uh, and what we can do, we can remove that uh, and we can just take off the 24 hour wheel just to go in just a little bit further on that disassembly. But at this point, we actually are ready to either replace the date disc or reassemble. So you remove the date jumper and what that has done that's taken off the 24 hour wheel. Now the reason I'm going into this is because accidents can happen, you can sometimes take off more than you're willing, so it's important to cover this as well. So once you've taken off that 24 hour wheel, underneath that date jumper disc that you just took off, there will be another wheel there which is, um, it helps turn, uh, it connects to the hour wheel, it helps turn the 24 hour wheel and change that date disc. Now let's start off the process of reassembling. So just install the 24 hour wheel, place it down. Um, I mean the case, the actual chassis is grooved out so you can't really make a mistake. And with this wheel here, very, very small pieces part. So you gotta be careful. You gotta maintain some dexterity and you've actually gotta remain patient with this. So you put the wheel down using these thin tweezers, be very gentle with the parts, they're only plastic. Once you've done that, we can go ahead, replace the date jumper. Now there is a little knack to this. The date jumper does not screw in at the moment. There's two little holes, um, which I'll show you now. So there's a little stud here at the bottom and there's another stud there. So those need to marry up and you just put down the day jumper and make sure they sit in those two holes and that will keep that still. You can use wooden pegs. I personally like to use uh, the back end of a matchstick just to press down on that because what we need to do now is cycle the 24 hour clock to get that 24 hour wheel and uh, just to catch onto the date the jumper. Now this is very fiddly, like I said, so you gotta remain patient. So make sure the crown is pulled out to the second position and just keep turning it, keep rotating until that 24 hour wheel will come around and you'll see the top part just lock itself into the top of that date jumper, which will then hold it down. So you can put the date disc on and begin the reassembly process. So just to give you some, a better view there, you can see, um, just need to press down on it slightly it is very fiddly, you know, the, the day jumper will pop out of the holes again. So you'll have to keep doing it. You have to revisit it. But, you know, these things uh, do require a lot of patience and only through, you know, experience do you get better at these things. Now you can go ahead and place down the date disc. Just place it on top of the date jumper and just that little triangle there, that little springy part, use your tweezers just to lift it up slightly and that will slot itself into those teeth on the date wheel just like so, and that's clicked into place. Once you've done that, now we can now put this wheel back into place, which is called the day date corrector wheel. Now there's a little slot there, it literally just sits in there, it doesn't fit into a hole or anything because that wheel does need to slide back and forward in order to engage the wheel that's gonna to attach to it to switch between day and date. Now, once you have done that, we can go ahead and replace the date indicator maintaining plate this is probably the fiddliest part of the job. Now you've got two holes on this plate, which again need to fit the same location pegs um, that we fitted the date jumper to. So just keep an eye out there, just next to the screw hole, line up the screw holes with the tweezers, you know, take your time and just make sure those two location pins that do stick through the holes. Once you've done that, then you can 
hold that down securely. Now this is where you've got to be very careful and put those teeny weeny little screws back into the holes and just carefully screw them down. Now this does take some skill, uh, it honestly does. Um, for you know rank amateurs like myself, I was started off, you're all over the place, the screws are flying all over the place, um, you're slipping and stuff and you know, I get why people want these detailed explanations and I'm more than happy to do that. Um, but there comes a point where you just need to figure it out yourself as well. So these are real knack points here. You do need to just practice to get it better. And that is why, you know, other modding videos, people don't really go into too much detail. The bits of advice I can give you is just that firm but gentle approach. Use your tweezers, hold the screws lightly but firmly. Um, hold the screw head over it and just... You know, you don't need to really put a lot of torque on there because these screws, they're only small and they, they tighten up pretty quick. And, you know, I'm using the end of a toothpick you can use. You can use the end of a matchstick like me or just a wooden peg just to hold this down. I've said it before, these movements are actually quite robust. They're not as fragile as you would think. You know, there are a couple of fragile parts which you need to be careful of, namely the, the balance which spins on the back of the movement. But other than that, the movement is pretty solid. So now that we have secured the date indicator plate, we can go ahead, put in that date corrector wheel that we took off when we took off the day wheel. So go ahead and there's a gold little post there, literally sits on top. Now there's a further little point on this. Now this date corrector wheel, you can easily put it the wrong way around. You need to look out for this small little dimple on top um, of the actual date corrector wheel and that shows you the correct way to install it so that little dimple should be facing up. Now when you replace the day disc you've actually got to keep turning it, rotating it because it won't sit flush so you just use your finger and just lightly turn it back and forward until you just feel it sit and it'll just flatten itself down uh, and that's another little knack uh, that you learn so just keep turning it, twisting it till it just actually just right there just see how it just sat down and that's it you are done. Now go ahead, pull out the crown to the second position, cycle through the full 24 hour clock so you can see the date and day wheel function again. And now we'll see the date changes and the day wheel changes. And once you've done that, you can just replace that C clip, just place it on top, uh, that little snap, and press down with the end of your tweezers. So there we go everyone, nice and easy job. Uh, it just looks a lot harder than it actually is. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section if you enjoyed this type of video. I think when you do a full mod video, it's hard to cover everything in depth and to give you all the advice and all those little knack points that you need in order to complete a successful mod. So if I break them down in manageable chunks, um, that should be good for everyone. Hopefully you guys you know, build up enough courage and confidence just to go at it uh, and start modding some watches so thank you to everyone for watching and i'll see you on the next video